decks do affect the sound. Many are thinking, nope, but it's true they do. Depending on the chip and design principles, there's a change that occurs. Now, I don't want to make it clear. I don't think this change to the sound signature is nearly as important or dramatic as things like your room, your speakers themselves, or the amplifier, but it's still worth looking into. Not only from the sound aspect, but also finding a DAC with the features your particular system benefits from. I would always suggest getting items like your room, your speakers, and your amp sorted first. Take care of the heavy hitter items, uh, then fine tune things like your DAC. If we truly felt there was no advantage to upgrading your DAC, we would just simply feed directly into our systems from our phone using the internal offerings. But what I can tell you from my experience is that sound is often pretty lean. It just doesn't hold the same weight or presence. Throw in even an entry level DAC into the fold and you'll instantly hear things a bit clearer. It might be a bit crisper or uh, might be best described as a clean sound. Now move your way up the DAC ladder and you'll find different characteristics. Depending on the DAC design, R2R, Delta Sigma, etc. Depending on your decision, you may go further into the ultra detailed sound or possibly something richer with an analog feel to it. So today we're gonna to look at an affordable option that covers a lot of ground for most users. The iFi Zen 1 Signature. The new signature model combines the DAC stage of the Zen DAC V2 and the Bluetooth stage of the Zen Blue V2 as well. On top of that, iFi improved the elements of the audio circuitry to improve the sound, just as the previous signature series have done. The signature ups the ante with a low jitter clock crystal, a 16 core microcontroller, which brings in four times more processing power, as well as high-end offerings of their capacitors, the resistors, and their inductor choices. The first thing I notice about the Zen 1 is the weight in my hands. It feels substantial and well-built. Sometimes this can be an illusion, but at the end of the day, the super light cases on some of the offerings just cheapen the product a bit. The case itself is a dark navy blue, and the front is a nice brushed aluminum in black. It actually looks really nice. So why did this one interest me? I would say the multiple input sources were the feature I was most excited about in comparison to some of the other DAC offerings. Looking at the back, we have USB input, optical input, coaxial input and output, depending on your source selection, as well as Bluetooth. There's absolutely no shortage of input options here. Outputs on the rear feature a balanced 4.4 millimeter out. That opens up the balance capabilities with the proper adapter. The 4.4 balanced is starting to be a common sight on iFi equipment, and I can see why. It takes up very little space in comparison to something like a pair of XLR outputs. It allows them to add a high-end feature with very little real estate. Next, we have the standard RCA outs. These might go to your amplifier or to a pair of powered speakers. Beyond that, we simply have the Bluetooth antenna and the 5 volt power supply input. The power on this DAC can actually be supplied by this input or the USB, so you have some options there as well. Let's swing around to the front. Now starting at the left, we have the power button. A short press to turn it on and a longer hold to turn it off. When you power on the unit, the iFi logo illuminates the center. The whole design and look has a bit of a retro feel that is actually kind of fun, but also pretty stylish. The center logo is actually used for more than just looks. Depending on the color displayed, it represents different file formats, such as white for PCM, and yellow is ACC, for example. The input button is the second button on the left, and this cycles through your inputs, Bluetooth, SPDIF, and USB. We already covered the light show in the center, but the light to the side of it also has a trick. The colors indicate the sampling frequency that you're receiving from your source. You might see yellow signaling PCM, or something like red showing DSD-256. A feature I'm glad they included was this display, but even better yet, you can put it in stealth mode with the button on the far right. It's nice to see your audio format, bitrate, and things like that, but sometimes you just want a clean look without all the extra lights coming from your audio rack. When I mention this, sometimes I think of one of my phono preamps, the Manny. It has a bit of a blinding light that resembles a prison spotlight at night. Let's talk about the internals of this DAC. The Zen 1 Signature DAC is the first Zen DAC that supports all high-res audio. PCM, DSD, MQA, and Bluetooth 96 kilohertz. It has coaxial spit of digital outputs supporting 24 bit 192 PCM. It supports high definition Bluetooth codecs, including Aptex Adaptive, Aptex HD, HWA, and LDAC. It even has a high gain antenna to deliver an extended Bluetooth range. I myself would likely use a dedicated streamer, something like a Wii Mini or Pro, into one of its mini inputs, but nonetheless, the Bluetooth performance was actually implemented really well here, and it allows people more of an all in one solution. 
The Zen 1 Signature DAC uses the Qualcomm QCC5100 with proprietary circuits. As a result, this DAC can create audibly superior Bluetooth. Its aptX adaptive and aptX HD codecs support up to 48 kilohertz, while LHDC and LDAC reach 96 kilohertz. If you use the Bluetooth, not much else to note here, outside of that the device stores up to eight paired devices. Go beyond that and the oldest connection will simply be deleted. The chip inside is a Burr Brown DAC chip. As far as I'm aware, iFi has always used Burr Brown chips in their devices, due to what many feel is that they offer a very natural musicality. Many feel it's a bit of a warmer presentation. This implementation uses the true native multi-bit integrated circuit for the Zen 1 signature. This will keep formats unchanged and bit perfect, allowing you to listen to the music in its original arrangement. So how does this all sound? The Zen 1 signature carries on the iFi audio sound with a very clean presentation and delivery, a silent background, clarity, and a non-fatiguing sound. To me, it has a very neutral and musical sound with respectable linear response and good transparency in the mid to treble ranges. What is interesting about this one is that the details are quite clear, but it's not fatiguing at all. The transparency is on point with other high-end DACs that I reviewed as well. The sound may have a bit of a boost in the mid-range, but outside of that, it feels very linear. The bass isn't overemphasized. It lives in its own space and produces clean but defined bass. It doesn't color the sound or add any extra bloat that you're probably looking to avoid. So what do I like on this one? I really like the connection options. It covers pretty much everything here even balanced. One of the better offerings I've seen on a DAC at this price range. The styling is on point for me. It just looks kind of cool and uh, it feels very well built in my hands. A nice way to it and everything has a polished look to it. The sound also fits my wheelhouse. It did not add any unique enhancements to the sound, which I liked. This DAC allowed me to hear the intended quality from its many sources. So what would I change on this one? I really like the design and build quality here, but if I was gonna change anything, I may add volume control as well as a remote. I know it's a DAC and it doesn't really need this, but this one has so many features and inputs and I feel like this might put it over the top. I also enjoy the colors to signify the file format and sampling frequency, but you do have to recall what each color signifies rather than it just displaying the information on a small screen. They likely went this direction with the colors as it fits the design well, but sometimes you just really wanna see those numbers, am I right? Final thoughts on this, I think it's a good value, especially for those looking for a high-performing DAC that has seemingly endless input options. It even has balanced connections. Coming in at $350, I think it's a fair price. It has a good sounding Bluetooth implementation, and while it doesn't offer a headphone amp for the desktop all in one user, it does enough and offers enough flexibility through its vast connection options that I feel this is a good buy. It's gonna run into a lot of competitors at this price bracket, but it's gonna come down to the feature set you need or possibly just the look you're going for. And I feel like this one won't fall short in either area. If you wanna support the channel, please like and subscribe. It really does make a difference, so I would really appreciate it. Also check out my affiliate links below. I get a small commission that I use to grow my channel with new test products as well as audio video recording gear for the channel. It won't cost you anything, so it's a great way to help me grow on the channel and bring you the best content. Take care and I'll talk to you soon. See ya.